Yeah, so I, I, I agree. And I think we've kind of touched the, on the kind of safety and efficacy. I mean, these drugs are very safe and, and, and barrier to resistance. And then, you know, the pill burden is small. So, so um, I think we should get to this, who falls outside most patients? And I think we, we you know, might as well address that, you know, women who are thinking about becoming pregnant or pregnant. So, so um, who wants to, um, I'll David, start are you going to start? I mean, I think that we know the one thing the guidelines did several years ago is it no longer just had a single box, a single recommendation for first-line therapy. And they qualified it by saying, for most patients. And then they went into great detail in other parts of the guidelines and with new and different tables where other patients would be discussed, such as those who have comorbidities, like renal problems and could not take even TAF, for example, needed perhaps a non-nuke regimen. Women of childbearing potential, or women who, who want to have children, because that two of them recommend, well, all, the, all but one of the recommended regimens in the, in the, for everyone could be used in women, is the raltegravir. Mm -hmm. Dictegravir and dolitegravir are not going to be recommended at this point, especially not dolitegravir at this point in time as more data is accumulated around the Sapano study. But I think you know, it's really trying to, again, get back to the individualization of therapy and breaking things down and say, you know, for most patients, as, as we have talked about, the um, integration inhibitor regimen with two nukes, especially with a TAF uh, a component, works really well for most patients. Mm -hmm. You know, you would have to say probably 75, 80, 85 percent of patients that we see. And even that idea about having to use a boosted PI, you know, that's gone. That's, right. that's gone away as well. So, the, you know, what I struggle for is, is many times trying to find those patients besides women of high range, um, childbearing potential, or, you know, even a patient with hepatitis B, hepatitis C, the first-line regimens are still oftentimes the best ones. Yep. So, so Eric, you have a woman. She comes in, um, and um, she um, says that she wants to have a family. Um, and wants to start soon, realize she has to suppress first, but she doesn't want to wait too long. What, what, what are you going to give her? And why? why? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, the challenge, it used to be when we had this discussion, you know, people would go immediately to the pregnancy guidelines and say, these are the drugs approved in pregnancy. And, and a lot of the reason why these drugs are recommended in pregnancy was because we had some experience, but mostly we had the PK data right. telling us that we were okay in that third trimester, second, third trimester, when there's the increased volume of distribution. So the way I always looked at it, well, as long as I'm following her, if she gets pregnant, I'll worry about that later. I don't really care what I start her on. Right, sure. Even if Averin's had sort of fallen off the list as a concern for right. drogenicity. Right. And then came the Botswana cohort when they were trying to look more carefully at the relationship with dolutegravir as it's being rolled out, where they were following women prospectively during their pregnancy, and there was the signal reported about a year ago of four cases, I think? Four. Yeah, four four yep. cases of neural tube defects, which translated into about a seven to 10 fold increased risk over other antiretrovirals that are being used and sort of the, what you expect in an HIV negative group, got a lot of attention and raised concerns appropriately. It raised concerns. Um, so now all of the guidelines are, you know, jumped on the fact that Dolutegravir is an issue, and particularly where it showed up was in women who were exposed at the time of conception. Right. That's not, the key point. Right. That's not key the point. first fact, trimester right, right, in yeah. general, and not, not beyond the first trimester. In fact, it was very right. safe. It was at the right. time of conception, yeah. which makes sense for neural tube defects, so you can't dismiss it, since most of that happens in the first six weeks or so. Um, and it, so it created a problem. It used to be the only time we had to worry about these drugs in pregnancy was for our subset of patients who are pregnant. Now we have to worry about it for all of our women of childbearing potential that aren't reliably using contraception. It's a, it's, boy, it's a, a tricky one because we've here we've been praising the dolutegravir-based regimens, mm -hmm. and, and one could easily say probably the same thing about bictegravir, sure. for which we have no data, but very similar no drugs. Data. And, and you don't want to deprive women of the best possible therapies. Therapy, yeah, and it ends issue. up being a, a difficult trade-off. Uh, you know, if numerically, it's, it's a trade-off that doesn't ease, is not easily answerable because the benefits of, to, the, to a woman of going on the best regimen may exceed the risks of the neural tube defects, which are really right now big unknown. It, it is. Yeah. I mean, the, it yeah. is conceivable the signal will go away with more follow-up. I think sure. there's going to be and, additional and it's analysis gonna be, It's going to be very soon, actually. It may yeah. be happening right 
right yeah. now, yeah. literally. Yeah. I think yeah. when the they analysis. originally reported it, they said end of March 19. Right. Right. So. Right. Yeah, this is the, the And best. then, so then we have no data with Big Tegravir, and then where we have Ral Tegravir, which is at least still on one of the lists, and when we think about why it might be there, you could argue for women of childbearing potential, where it is one of the drugs approved in pregnancy, but it's not because we know there's a lot of experience, documented experience, for exposures at the time of conception. Right, the registry has all sorts of limitations, and even when it breaks it down in first trimester, you can't really specifically say how many of them were at the time of conception. Yeah. So yeah. the data is really so, thin. Though I guess there is probably enough raltegravir that has been distributed over the last 13 years that if, I think that, that if there, Maybe. Maybe. I, I, it's very hard because there's and been nothing like this prospective sure. data no, collection. No, 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 I get it. It's systematically looking yep. for no, 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 I get it. Defects. I get it. I get it. One, one thing I will say is that boosted protease inhibitors in pregnancy are still widely used, mm -hmm. but we haven't been so enthusiastic. I think part of it has to do with just the GI tolerability, sure, which sure. has always been an issue. Part of it has to do with dose darunavir twice daily, it's yeah, really kind sure. of difficult. Yeah. And then also, you know, my colleagues who study this think that it is associated with, um, with premature, premature, premature birth. birth. Right. Yeah. And that's really not a good side effect right. for <laughs> during pregnancy. So right. what, one thing, I, I confess, we're using raltegravir yeah. still yeah. for the women that you described to Eric, and then we're using, uh, we're very comfortable using dolutegravir late Once in pregnancy. Pregnant, sure. yeah. Yeah. And I think the other thing is important to know is um, we used to say that if someone was, a woman was on a stable regimen that they were tolerating, yeah. don't, don't mess with it, even if it's a drug where, where we don't have um, necessarily uh, data, but, mm -hmm. but cobicystat now is, is one that is out. <laughs> so, yeah. so if a woman is on a stable cobicystat containing therapy and becomes pregnant, you should change that yeah. therapy. That PK concerns. Therapy because there's PK yeah. concerns.